It's good to be back with another Lithospite. I want to share something that I think is very important today, and it really is going to take a level of discernment and dividing rightly truth from falsehood with what we're going to talk about and what we're going to discuss. A lot of times we as believers get on the bandwagon of things and it's not the right bandwagon to be on. With that being said, just a few weeks ago, David Draymond, the front man of the band Disturbed, called out the Westboro Baptist Church for protesting their concert. And of course, the Westboro Baptist Church was calling the music of Disturbed devil music. Disturbed is a heavy metal band, American heavy metal band um, that's been around for a good number of years. I followed them for quite some time and absolutely love their music. But uh, they were out there protesting the concert and saying that the music of Disturbed was devil music. And David Draymond addressed this. And I want you to hear what David Draymond says, how he addresses this. And then when, I, when we come back, I want to talk about and dissect what he's saying, because we really need to hear very clearly what is being spoken through David Draymond. And I really believe that it's a wake-up call to the church as a whole in America. I know that you know, the Westboro Baptist Church, many of you know that they're more of a cult than they are a church. They do a lot of really weird things like protesting the funerals of fallen service members, which is absolutely reprehensible to do. Uh, they're they're kind of out there, but that, that venom of religion that characterizes them, it's really kind of entered into the church as a whole, and we need to get away from that. But this is how David Draymond addressed this protest outside of their concert. Now, I think it's funny, and I can't help but mention it. I'm probably going to get in a little bit of trouble for this, and I know everybody backstage is going, Oh my God, what is he going to say? But it was brought to my attention that a contingent from the Westboro Baptist Church came here to protest the show tonight. Because they think this is just devil music. <laughs> what an absolute load of unbelievably stinking, festering horse shit that is. Let me ask you something. Do you see any sin up here? be bad about setting people free every single night. You know what's a sin? Vanity is a sin, motherfuckers. And for them to be so vain as to look down from their high horse and look at all of us and tell us that we're doing something wrong, who's the sinner? What's the worst thing you're going to experience at a disturbed show? A little bit of profanity? Will profanity kill you? No, but the darkness can. And it is our job to dispel the darkness. Case and point. The sun. You know. I have a soft spot for this gentleman, not only because of what he's gone through, but because we've all gone through it ourselves. And Gabriel, I have a secret for you. Sometimes darkness can shine. 
show you the light. We definitely have a lot going on there and a lot that I would like to talk about in the context of Scripture. Really, despite you know the profanity that's on stage and we have to grow up a little bit and understand that's that's where they're coming from. And, and that's okay because that's where they're at. We have to meet people where they're at and, that, and just really understand that. And I'm getting kind of choked up about this because what you just heard on stage was more biblical than what the Westboro Baptist Church was doing outside and protesting the concert. There is a man on that stage with a heart for people who wants to see people set free, set free from drug addiction, set free from wanting to commit suicide, set free from the darkness. And I love how he said it is our job to dispel the darkness. Here's my question is, where has the church been in dispelling the darkness? Where has it the church been in wanting to see people set free? I'm going to address another topic very quickly before we get back to this one. I saw yesterday, and I, I really believe it ties into this. I saw it on Twitter from a very prominent American preacher who a lot of people love. And his post on Twitter was this, is that deliverance ministries are a farce. Well, dude, that's kind of how we've gotten in the trouble that we're in today. And that's why you're seeing men like David Draymond rising up and wanting to see people set free at their concerts. It's because you're denying the power of God and what he can do for people. You're denying it and you need to stop denying it because what you're doing is you're driving people away from the light and you're causing more darkness and confusion than light. But well, I really love what's going on here with David Draymond because it's something that started stirring in me back in June. And I wanted to really take a really close look at the spirit of Elijah, the ministry of Elijah, and really compare that and tie that into the ministry of John the Baptist. I started really sensing on the inside of me that the spirit of Elijah that the church has been waiting for and longing for is not going to look anything like what it expected. It's not going to be this person who's been groomed and brought up in the church. It's coming from the outside. And that's exactly where John the Baptist came from, who was operating under the spirit of Elijah. And I would say that what you see going on on this stage is you start, you're starting to see the bubblings of a spirit of Elijah rising up, a spirit that wants to see people set free, a peop, uh, somebody who wants to call sin, sin, and move away from the small, really ridiculous things that we get ourselves wrapped up into, especially in, in the Western church, all of the little controversies, the petty stuff that we get involved in. While we have all of these people that are bound and need our help, they need to be delivered, they need to be set free. So let's go for a moment to John, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It says here, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, let's take a look and zero in on the wilderness here. Uh, John the Baptist was not preaching in a church. He was not preaching in an area that was considered something that the religious elite would want to go to, maybe something like a heavy metal concert, wink, wink. Um, the wilderness, the Greek term for that is ramos, which means uncultivated. It's unappropriated territory, a land not to use, not used to grow crops. Well, my friend, the harvest is everywhere. It's even in the wilderness right now. And at these concerts and at these shows, instead of standing outside and protesting them, you really need to get on the inside and help guys like David Draymond to see people set free from the things, the addictions and the darkness that they need to be set free from. And let's talk about John the Baptist for a minute because he didn't look like the, the religious elite either. He looked more like a heavy metal musician with what he wore and the way that he acted and even in the way that he spoke. So let's take a look at that. Let's go to the Bible and see what that says. Uh, in Matthew chapter three, it says, for this is he that was spoken of, of the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. He did not look anything 
like the religious establishment. It's not what the religious establishment was was waiting for. And as we're going to find out uh, with what Jesus said to his disciples, they really missed him. They were waiting for the prophet Isaiah to return or the spirit of Elijah to return, and they completely missed it because John was not what they were looking for. So at this time, that we're living in. We need to get out of our mind the vain imaginations that we have in our head of what the spirit of Elijah is going to look like. We need to get that out. We need to take a look at scripture as an example. It was more like John the Baptist, and it's more like men like David Draymond on the stage at this concert, who's really in his heart wanting people to see set uh, people set free. Then in Matthew chapter 3, at verse 7, uh, this is very interesting too. Um, John the Baptist had his religious hecklers and protesters outside of his baptisms. It says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. Let's talk about these vipers here for a minute. Uh, we've In our world today, in our English language, this is kind of a dumbed down word, but it was a very strong term to call somebody a viper, especially somebody who was a religious leader, a viper back in the day of John the Baptist. The Greek word for viper is ex- exidna, and it's a poisonous snake with venom. And really what it was used to uh, describe was somebody whose words would exchange bitter for sweet and light for darkness so it was somebody's who somebody's whose tongue was used to pervert truth to call darkness light and light darkness and to call evil good and good evil so that is one of the characteristics of the religious system that existed during the days of john the baptist and jesus and i dare say that it is the primary characteristic of the religious system that we're living in right now let's talk about the spirit of elijah for a moment because jesus does promise and the word does promise that the spirit of Elijah will come again before the great and terrible day of the Lord. In Malachi 4, 5, it says, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. So before Jesus returns as a reigning king, the spirit of Elijah will come. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17 concerning John the Baptist and the spirit of Elijah. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias shall truly come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke of John the Baptist. What we have on stage here at this concert is a John the Baptist moment. Yes, David Draymond does use very strong language, but that language isn't going to kill you. What's going to kill you is the darkness. It's your addiction that's going to kill you. It is your your fear that is going to kill you. It is the greater sin that is going to kill you. It is going to drag you down. And that's what you need to be set free from. And I completely agree with David Draymond's assessment of the situation of what's going on inside the show as well as outside of the show. And here's the deal. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness. Here we see a man with a very tender heart trying to set people free through his music. And if you really sit down and listen to the lyrics of the music of Disturbed, uh, it's 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 music that is trying to teach you and and bring you up to be a better person to take on the challenge of challenges of this life it, that's really what most of their music is about behind you know and behind it's got all the heavy guitar riffs and and double bass drum and everything like that but we see him basically preaching in the wilderness and that's what the church needs to do why is somebody like david draymond being used of God with the spirit of Elijah bubbling up on him in this place when we don't see the church there. Well, that's exactly what the problem is, is the church isn't there. It's on the outside protesting. It's protesting what's going on in there, making themselves look absolutely foolish. And we've done that way too many times. We need to stop 
protesting stuff and start to go help people, to see people set free. And the wilderness, a heavy metal concert, is not necessarily a place where you're going to find people of the church. You're going to find them on the outside. Well, those days need to stop. We need to go inside and start to see people set free. Matthew 21, 32, this is what it says of the ministry of John the Baptist. John the Baptist wasn't preaching to the church, honey. That, that was not what his ministry was for. Uh, that's not really what the ministry of Lithos Cry is for either. Yes, I appreciate every believer that follows us and supports us, but it's really to get beyond the walls of the church and to help put context to everything that's going on, especially in the music scene and more specifically the hard rock and the metal scene. In Matthew 21, 32, Jesus said this, For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and ye did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him, and when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe him. Wow. So the ministry of John the Baptist, of whom the spirit of Elijah was upon, was not for the church. It was for the tax collector, and it was for the harlot. It was for the person that is struggling, that is struggling with their sin and is looking for relief, that's looking for freedom, that's looking for release. And that's exactly who you're going to find at a place like a Disturbed concert, people that are looking for that freedom. And David Draymond, he's hit the nail on the head. He really has. And yes, God can pour out his spirit upon whoever he desires. He's just looking for the person with the right heart. And here's what's even more amazing about David Draymond is he's not just your heavy metal dude. Before he became the lead singer of Disturbed, he was actually in rabbinical school studying the Torah and the Word of God. So there's logos in there that the Spirit can use. And God loves these people so much that are at this concert that you got these yahoos outside protesting that are against them. But you have a man with a heart, a soft and tender heart that God can use in an environment like that to draw them to himself. So please understand that God's going to use whoever he wants to. And you know, when David Draymond is talking about the sin, it really takes me to what Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees about sin. He said this in Matthew 23, 20, 23 through 24, and I'm going to paraphrase it. and You can go look it up yourself. He said, you scribes and your Pharisees, woe unto you, you, you bunch of hypocrites. Same thing David Draymond's saying. You're focusing on these little things over here, um, but you forgot the weightier matters of the law. And here are the weightier matters. It's not, ooh, heavy metals, devil music, which all of it isn't. All right, we just need to get that straight. But here are the weightier matters of the law. They're judgment, mercy, and faith. Judgment, mercy, and faith. So while a lot of us are spinning around in our little happy church circles, beating each other over the head because, oh, you listen to this type of music, and no, I don't like that type of music. Oh, that's not godly music. Or even doctrinally, oh, you speak in tongues? Oh, no, that's not in the Bible. We, we need to stop that. Okay, we really need to stop that. We need to focus on the weightier matters of the law. That's judgment, meaning justice, mercy, and faith. Where's the mercy in protesting a heavy metal concert? I hope they had a lot of fun out there. And for those of you that are not part of Westboro Baptist Church and have been protesting concerts and things like that, I hope, hope you have been having a lot of fun with that because that's all that it's going to get you. It's really going to get you nowhere. And when it comes down to it, what is the Bible all about? And what is Jesus all about? He's about seeing people set free. It's that simple. We know this. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim what liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Oh, that sounds so much like what David Draymond said when he was speaking out against the Westboro Baptist Church. I really believe 
that this was not just a wake-up call and a calling out of the Westboro Baptist Church, but I believe what you saw on stage here with David David Draymond from Disturbed was a wake-up call for every pastor, every church, and every Christian in America. We need to stop playing church and go out and start seeing people set free. And yes, deliverance ministries are for today. If you don't believe that, you've been in your ivory tower a little bit too long and you've not been around the people that need to be set free. Really, let's grow up. We need to grow up. And if you're upset over this video because I featured Damon Dray David Draymond and he said a few bad words in it, we need to grow up because that's where he's at and that's okay. That's fine. That's where he's at. And you know what? When we take a look at scripture, I, I find it funny how a lot of times we just preach and focus on the stuff that we want to because it's clean. Well, the word dung, which is the equivalent of one of the words that uh, David Draymond said, is actually mentioned 29 times in the Bible, and that's excrement from humans or animals. And the Bible even goes this far, and I've never heard a message preached on this, but I think with the shame that a lot of us have because we have not been preaching the truth and seeing people set free, some of us have experienced this in Malachi 2, 3. It says, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung on your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall take you away with it. The shame. And some of us, we, we need to be ashamed. We need to be ashamed that we're not out there doing what David Draymond is doing and wanting people set free from the darkness and dispelling the darkness. That is the job of the church. That's what Jesus called us to do. But I have to say this in one parting note. When you deny the power of God, when you deny the spiritual gifts, when you deny the fact that deliverance ministries are for today, what do you have? You have nothing. Nothing. And you're nothing more than a hypocrite doing nothing. It's time to grow up. It's time to go out and to go into those uninhabited places of the wilderness and bring in the harvest. There was a harvest in that auditorium at that concert. And David Draymond, thank you for having a heart sensitive for people and wanting them to see them set free. That's all I've got for today. It's a lot. And I know you might have to go back and watch us a couple of times to soak everything in, but that's where it's at. Really, the spirit of Elijah, it's being poured out today, and it's not what you thought it's going to look like.